Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problem three of part one of our fundamentals um, review of sets on the AP Calculus multiple choice um, release questions. This problem corresponds to problem number two of the 1969 AP Calc on release questions for the multiple choice. All right, let's take a look at the question. Um, for number two, we have to find, um, we're solving this equation. The natural logarithm of x minus two is less than zero if and only if. So this problem is assessing our ability to do two things. Firstly, to solve logarithmic equations. And secondly, to pay close attention to the domain constraints on your logarithmic arguments, okay? So um, let's go ahead and solve this equation first. So we have ln of the natural logarithm of x minus two has to be less than zero. So if I wanted to solve this equation, um, I'll exponentiate both sides using e as the basis of exponentiation. So I'll have e raised to the natural logarithm of x minus two as less than e raised to the zero x power. Okay, on the left side, e raised to the ln of x minus two. These two cancel out using the inverse property of logarithms. We have x minus two equals e to the zero is one. And then we can add two to both sides and then we have x is less than three. Okay, so um, you might be in a hurry to select option A well, but that, that's wrong. Now, recall that there are uh, constraints in the domain for logarithmic functions, okay? So you cannot take the natural logarithm or the logarithm of any base of zero or negative numbers, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on the logarithmic argument what you're taking the logarithm of, and then we're going to um, make sure that we are acknowledging the domain constraints on that argument, okay? So x minus two has to be uh, greater than zero. If you take the natural logarithm of zero or any negative number, you will have an undefined output because it is outside the domain, okay? So if you solve this, you have x is greater than 2. So if x is less than 3 and x is greater than 2, we can sandwich this into one inequality. We have 2 is less than x and x is less than 3. So your answer is option letter C. Okay, just to help you understand what's going on here, if you think about your, your logarithmic function, so let's say you have your logarithmic function. You have a uh, vertical asymptote at zero, okay? And then the graph intersects one, all right? And then you have your logarithmic function looking something like this. Now, what does x minus two mean? x minus two basically means that your graph is being shifted two units to the right. So this um, intercept of one comma zero becomes three comma zero, okay? So to do the shift for you, rather than shift the graph, let me shift my, um, let me shift the axis of the other one. So I'm gonna shift my axis uh, two units to the left, which is the same thing as shifting my graph two units to the right, okay? So one, two, okay? Remember this translation here, x minus two, if you remember that in uh, pre-calc, that means you're shifting your graph two units to the right. So I shifted my graph two units to the right, okay? But we're looking for where the graph is less than zero. So this is uh, your x-axis less than zero is anywhere beneath the x-axis. So your solution region is a region bounded 
by, by this vertical asymptote, x equals uh, 3, I'm sorry, 2, and this um, 0 right here, which is x equals um, 3. Okay, so the region in between it, right here, this interval is basically um, 2 is less than x is less than 3. Okay, remember you cannot include the vertical asymptote, and this is a strictly less than, this doesn't include the endpoint, so we cannot include 3. So it's kind of like you have an open circle here. So this region right here, between 2 and 3, represents your solution region, which is what we got here. Okay, so that's just another way of solving it. It's a little bit more complicated, but um, you can totally do um, use this approach to solve um, logarithmic inequalities.